In this first pattern, we're going to look at the Azure Pipelines OpenShift extension. This pattern, we're going to take a source from GitHub, run our uh, pipeline in Azure Pipelines using an Azure hosted agent, and use the OpenShift extension to interact with OpenShift. The pipeline that you'll see um, requires a bit of setup, both in Azure DevOps and OpenShift. The setup is an Azure hosted agent, uh, specifying the VM tool of Ubuntu latest, in this case, the OpenShift extension, as well as a service connection to help us log into OpenShift. In OpenShift, we've created a project, a service account, uh, and therefore, and a token uh, for the service account to log in. The key steps you'll see in the pipeline will be a git clone, will be connect to OpenShift, we'll start a build, which will force a source to image build job to go away and build our uh, source code and container. In this example, we're actually executing tests within uh, a running container so and then transferring the test results back into Azure DevOps, um, the Azure hosted agent, to publish them subsequently within the Azure pipelines. It, second um, example that you'll see will be use of the um, OpenShift extension still, but rather than directly using the OpenShift extension, using the OpenShift Maven plugin. This Maven plugin, you can achieve a deployment in four simple steps that you see on the right. You do an OC login, uh, a Maven clean OC resource. We do a start S2I build, Maven package OC build, and then MVN OC deploy, which will deploy your application into the OpenShift cluster. In this example, you'll simply see the pipeline do a git clone, do a Maven and build a, build a unit test within the Azure hosted agent, will connect to OpenShift, and subsequently do the three steps in order to deploy to OpenShift. So let's have a look at the first pattern. So what I've got here is my Azure DevOps organization where I've got my project and pipelines. I've got my OpenShift cluster where I've got my target project where I'm about to deploy. I've actually had to set up this project and basically set up a service account that I want uh, to be in control of and set the service account with enough permissions to do what I need to do, such as uh, put um, containers in the registry and um, run build jobs. I've got my Python test calculator source and I'm just using um, this uh, project here in GitHub and I've actually got it running so just an example um, it adds a couple of the numbers together a simple service. Now if I go back to my Azure DevOps organization uh, what I've put in the organization is the OpenShift extension and you can find that under organization settings and OpenShift extension. Now if I was to uh, install it again I would simply browse the marketplace search for OpenShift and find that extension and then you can go and install that within your project and uh, allow permissions to your pipelines. Let's go into our project pipelines then and we'll look at the Python test calculator here. Now I will kick that off while we're sort of going to look at it. That's starting to run. And let's go back and just have a look at the definition. So at the moment, um, it's using an as a hosted agent, as a VM image, uh, Ubuntu VM. It's um, doing a simple hello world. But I've then sort of built tasks based on the OpenShift extension. Now, within the extension, if I was to add another one up front here, I would look for the OpenShift extension on the command taskbar. I would see I've got a connection type OpenShift and I would have to give it a service connection. Now you can see that service connection I've established one here. The way I establish that is basically um, I will go into the project settings, service connections. I'll create a new service connection. I would create a new OpenShift connection. Uh, in this, you get a couple of options, but 
I've used token-based authentication. I simply put the server URL or the API server URL API where I've, uh, my OpenShift cluster is, and I give it the API token. Now that API token you can get from um, the using the OCCLI tool, um, OC sort of get token. That basically gives you a token, which is a simple way to do OC login uh, with that token ID. Now, if we have a look at the token I've set up here, the parameters I put in is to my OpenShift cluster here, and I've pasted the API token from my particular service account that I'm using. So let's go back to, and see how the pipeline's running. So as it's running, the standard out is sort of streaming back into the Azure Pipelines job and that will be stored within this job so I have a, a good history of what's going on. It starts, every every sort of um, pipeline starts with a sort of the checkout of the particular code. Um, I'm starting my pipeline here. I'm checking the OpenShift connection. Um, I can see I've logged in and I've started the build job. Now that's actually done a, an OC build command and that's triggered off a, a build job in OpenShift. I'm then sort of checking the latest status um, and then going to sort of run some tests and pipe those tests back into Azure DevOps uh, to be published. If I have a look at the builds, so this is the build job has just complete number two minutes ago and the logs will correspond here to the logs that have been streamed back into Azure DevOps. And now look at my, this is my Python calculator. Uh, this is the new one which is running here. Um, so it's all running. I can even look at the terminal, but um, now it's found its pod name it will just be about to um, run those unit tests and then it will subsequently publish back into Azure DevOps. So let's look at a previous run. Um, and you can see the test results were streamed back here. There were two tests run and they passed. And that, that was based on the file which was streamed back. So let's look and have the another example. And this is still using the OpenShift extension. But what I'm doing here is using the Java uh, Jcube um, Maven plugin. In this plugin here, rather than use the OC commands to sort of set up the build and sort of different uh, OpenShift and Kubernetes resources, I'm using Maven tasks. These Maven tasks um, underlying use the OC ex extension or the OC CLI tool, but as a Java developer, you know, I don't have to get down into the depths of knowing the OC commands. I'm simply using the, the Maven commands. Here, I basically use the Maven tasks um, here, and I've created these different tasks. So at first, I do a build and unit test. I then connect to OpenShift with the OpenShift extension. I then generate resources that will be generating files within my project here. Those files will subsequently be used when I do a um, container build and deploy resources in the, in the following steps. And that's where it will ultimately deploy to OpenShift. If we look at the previous run here, this particular job, do the checkout. I've connected to OpenShift and that's sort of the command line that you get. I've generated the resources and then I've done a container build. So that will do, um, download a few Maven um, dependencies, deploy resources again, will download dependencies, and at the end we will see uh, the OC sort of commands that it's doing. So it's updated a deployment config, updating a route, updating a service, and then it's successful. And if we go to topology, that little jcube config here, little pod here is running. And that's simply a Spring Boot app 
which I um, got running, and you can see four four steps to complete that.